By now, you've probably heard of a new solo queue system coming to WoW. This, of course, comes after months of countless videos where players have demanded some form of solo content for PvP. 9.2 introduces a brawl called the Solo Shuffle, and it is live right now on the PTR. Skillcapped, along with players like Venruki and Supatiz, logged on to test this new game mode to see what it's all about. And today, we're going to tell you everything you need to know about this game mode and some other PvP news. First things first, I bet you are wondering how the hell this new game mode works. On its surface, it functions almost exactly like an arena skirmish. You can queue for games in the same window you would queue for other PvP content. On the PTR, it is currently considered a brawl, so it is unclear whether it will be a rotating game mode or an alternative to the current skirmish system. Unlike skirmishes though, solo shuffle is 3v3 only, and the matchmaking system chooses 4 DPS and 2 healers to play in a 6 round arena brawl. In the first round there will be 1 healer and 2 DPS on each team, and after every game the teams will be shuffled around so that every possible combination of players can be matched against each other. I'm sure you're asking, wait, doesn't that mean there can be 2 healers on one team? Fortunately, no, because one rule of the matchmaker is to put at least 1 healer on each side. And in case you were wondering, tanks will be considered healers in this format, so one tank or healer per matchup. Map picks seem to be random right now, with each game of the series going to a new stage after every round. Each round lasts a maximum of 5 minutes, but will end the moment anyone dies, giving a point to the team that scored a kill. To prevent games from going too long, dampening will start at 2 minutes and will quickly ramp up to 100% until the 5 minute mark. In between rounds, there is an incredibly short wait in the preparation room before the next game starts, forcing you to quickly swap talents if needed. After 6 rounds are over, each player will receive a total score, indicating how many rounds they won with their random teammates. If for whatever reason someone leaves or doesn't enter in the first round, the games will immediately end. And in case you're wondering, yes, there are rewards with Honor and Conquest, but they are currently the same as Skirmish values. And we really hope that changes, since 3 Conquests per win seems abysmal with weapons costing as much as 1800 points, which would mean 600 Skirmish or Solo Shuffle wins. And finally, there is a rating system, but just like Skirmishes, your MMR is hidden. Once again, that might change with the official release of the game mode if Solo Shuffle becomes an integrated solo bracket. Hopefully our explanation made sense, but I am sure you want to know one thing. Is it fun? The short answer is yes, but the long answer is it depends. As a DPS, we really enjoyed our games. Even though things seemed a bit chaotic, it felt like a more engaging version of arena skirmishes, which tend to feel a bit underwhelming since once they're over, the fun instantly stops. As a healer, our experience was a bit underwhelming, and admittedly somewhat frustrating. Without communication, it is difficult to properly use defensive cooldowns with your team, meaning lots of overlapping and random deaths. Some players might not mind this, but if you are inexperienced and undergeared on a healer, it might be a bit demoralizing to lose 6 matches in a row because your teammates aren't using defensives. In many ways, it felt like queuing LFG, but without any strings attached. It gives you the feeling of queuing Arena without needing to hard commit to a grindy queue session or needing to awkwardly leave the discord of two people you just found in Group Finder. For geared players who are bored and want something to do, or for anyone who wants to experiment with a new spec or build, then this system will work really well for you. At the end of the day, it is a form of arena and it feels like speedrunning a queue session. But for anyone else, it might not solve the issues that players were hoping a solo queue system would address. For one, gear does not appear to scale at all in this format, so if you are a fresh 60, there is practically no reason to play this game mode. On top of that, the rewards are next to abysmal. With a small amount of honor and a laughable 3 conquests for repeat wins, you will still need to queue Rated Arena or RBGs to cap your conquest in a reasonable time frame. Now, it's definitely possible that the rewards will be different, but the bigger issue plaguing PvP as a whole is a huge power disparity between players. Without good incentives and scaling, new players might avoid this bracket entirely, and PvP participation should be the main focus of any new system. So what is our complete analysis? Overall, we are excited, but there are still some problems we would like to see addressed. At the end of the day, something is better than nothing, so any new game mode should be critiqued and celebrated at the same time. But I'm sure you have questions too about the new trinkets being added in 9.2. We got to play around with them, so what do we think? 
Before we get into it, if you want to be prepared for everything the patch brings, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow. Right now, for prices as low as $4.99 a month, you can get instant access to all of our site-exclusive videos. Yeah, that's right. For the cost of a Twitch subscription, you can watch over 600 guides designed to directly improve your rating in Arena. Don't believe us? Well, for over 10 years, we've helped over half a million players just like you. We are so confident in our videos that we offer a full refund if you don't see the results you were expecting. With skillcap.com, you can feel confident that you will see rating gains that you never thought were possible. Check us out by clicking the link in the video description. If you haven't heard by now, there are some new PvP trinkets being added in the patch. Cosmic Gladiators Fastidious and Echoing Resolve have created a lot of discussion on Twitter and Reddit the past few weeks. These trinkets will take up your medallion slot, meaning they can't be equipped at the same time as Relentless, Adaptation, or, you guessed it, your Gladiator's Medallion. Fastidious Resolve is on a 3 minute cooldown, and when used, it will last 15 seconds and absorb the next 2 CCs or interrupts on the target. Once 2 effects have been soaked or once the 15 seconds are over, the trinket won't be usable for another 3 minutes. Echoing Resolve, on the other hand, increases every CC effect on you by 20%, but every time a CC lands, you will become immune to the next CC or interrupt for 30 seconds. This means you will be immune to every other CC or interrupt that hits you in the game, with the trade-off that every CC will last 20% longer. Both of these trinkets seem to try and address one growing problem in PvP, that there are so many things that can prevent you from getting value out of your offensive CDs. We all know the feeling of using your biggest cooldown only to be instantly shut down by a warrior or mage when you are just trying to burst. Fastidious Resolve will make it much easier to get value out of your cooldowns, but at the expense of not having a reliable CC break the entire game. This makes it work well for humans and possibly orcs due to stun reduction and stun breaks, but we don't see value across the board. Echoing Resolve is a massive question mark at the moment. In some matchups, it might be absolutely broken for healers. Against BM Hunters, for example, it essentially prevents Stun Trap, and against Fire Mages, it prevents DB Sheep. In fact, it seems to make CC chains infinitely more difficult or outright impossible to land, but once again at the cost of CC lasting 20% longer across the board. It is really hard to say how these trinkets will affect the meta, and we don't predict too much swapping from the current medallion trinket since it is really consistent and easy to use. In any case, we think these new trinkets will be mostly broken for humans and orcs, which doesn't really help the racial imbalance we currently see in Arena. And as a final note, the WoW Community Council is finally public for all to read. A few months ago, the WoW devs said, hey, maybe we should have a dedicated place to communicate with players. So after a few weeks of waiting, the Community Council forums are finally here, with different representatives from all areas of the game having a direct line of communication with the devs. Right now, there is a post about PvP gearing that we highly recommend checking out since it points out many of the key problems facing alts and new players in PvP. But we want to hear from you! If there is one thing you want developers to address, what is it? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, we hope you learned something from today's news update. If you want to support the channel, please consider subscribing and turning all notifications on. It really helps us out and it will give you instant access to all of our uploads. As always though, thanks for watching. See you soon.